يفقهوا قولي ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم الخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح اللهم اجعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل يا عبادي الذين أصرفوا على أنفسهم لا تغنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث قدسي يقول الله تعالى أنا إن ظن عبدي بي وأنا ما هو إذا ذكرني صرف الله العلي العظيم وصرف الرسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين الحمد لله all praises you to Allah سبحانه وتعالى أو خالق أو سستينا أو شرشا the one we place our reliance and hopes in we send all praises on his noble messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم salutations upon him the best of all creation the one who has guided us to this part of Sirat al -Mustaqib. my dear brothers and sisters Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with the ni'mah of being Muslims and for being here is also a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be present in this Jum'ah so many people have not been gotten the ability to be here either because they have passed on or they are sick, they are ailing or because of some commitment that they cannot be here. This is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a great blessing from Him. My dear brothers and sisters, we are living in a time where a lot of people are becoming depressed. They are losing hope. It is estimated that anxiety and depression will overtake cardiovascular disease as the number one cause of morbidity and mortality in the world within the next 10 years. And post-COVID, we are already seeing it. So many people are requiring normal people. I met a physician, and she is on so many antidepressants because of working conditions, because of separation from her husband. And there are so many people going through these type of difficulties. And sometimes it is easy to say, why is this happening to me? Aren't I a Muslim? Don't I believe in Allah? So why is Allah putting this great test on me? Sometimes mental tests can be greater than physical tests. Physical tests, we know very easily how to solve them. But sometimes the mental problems, the physical things become slight in front of them. And so it is important for us to understand uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we should place all reliance and hope on. And we should not give up this quality of hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar radiallahu ta'ala used to say that al-iman bain al-raja wal khawf that iman, faith, lies between raja, hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and khawf, fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of his punishment. And Imam Abu Hanifa in his book Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar has mentioned beautifully that these two parts are like the two wings of a butterfly or the two wings of a balloon. If one becomes heavier or one becomes lighter, as we will say, the kite ayo, you know, the bird will crash. You cut one side of a bird wing, he will not be able to fly. He will not be able to pilot himself and traverse this path. So we must balance this area of having hope as well as having fear. Because sometimes when we have too much fear, we can become hopeless. 
And so it is important for us to look at these two things and we'll talk a little bit about hope today and probably another time talk about fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered upon a young man, young boy, and he was dying. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, how are you? The boy replied, Ya Rasulullah, I swear by Allah that I have hope in Allah and I am scared over my, skin, my sins. He is hopeful that Allah will be merciful. But at the same time, he is aware that during his life he was not perfect, like most of us. And he is afraid of Allah's punishment. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied that لا يجتمعان في قلب أبدي. These two things do not gather in the heart of a servant, except that what Allah grants him what he hopes for and protects him from what he is scared of. Mashallah. So it is important for us to remember that hope in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is an important part of faith, and we call that raja as opposed to tamanna, which is false hope. Allah's raja and having raja in Allah is to behold Allah's vastness of His mercy and have full confidence in what He is able to give you. Whatever you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can answer your prayer. And so it is important for us to understand that Having true hope requires amas and working towards it. Whereas false hope is just wanting something and not doing anything, saying you'll get it. Hmm? That's why, you know, Ibn Al Qayyim rahimahullah said that hope in Allah is a necessity for the seeker of his journey towards Allah. He moves between sins which he hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive, shortcomings in his good deeds which he hopes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify, righteous deeds which he hopes that Allah will accept. The Sahabas never did good deeds and just took it for granted that it was accepted. We know in the hadith of Ramadan that he would spend six months after Ramadan making dua of Allah, accept our deeds during Ramadan. So that hopefulness of having our deeds accepted, and with that steadfastness that he hopes he will be better able to attain. Because we do deeds, but we fall off. And so our hope is that Allah will keep us on this istiqamah and this path to continue what we are doing and to increase upon it. Sometimes we are reading Quran and we are reading just Yasin a day or a page a day. And we hope that we could continue this. Our hope is that we could continue this till we die and that hopefully by the time we die we are doing more. And that should be our hope. And we should hope that all these things bring us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we obtain the greatest of hopes which is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Yawm al -Qiyama. The messengers would see us mentioned in the Holy Quran, call up Rasulahum, Afillahi shakun fatir samawat wal ard. Do you have doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one who has created, originated the heavens and the earth? يَدْعُوكُمْ لِيَغَفِرَ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ وَيُعْخِرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجْلِ مُسَلْمًا This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants you to call upon Him so that He can forgive you. How merciful is the Lord? The messengers are telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are the creators of the heaven, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, he is one who wants you to call on him so that you can be forgiven. My dear brothers, but remember 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also mentioned man taba wa amana amana amala man taba amana man taba wa amana amana swaliha that person who does tawbah and he believes wa amila amala swaliha and he does those amals that are righteous faulaika yubaddil Allah sayyati hasanat imagine that that the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that that person who does tawbah and he believes so he does tawbah he's a mu'min he believes and he does acts of righteousness فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهِ سَيِّيَاتِهِ بِحَسَنَاتِ Allah not only forgives you my brothers look at this to give hope Allah exchanges يُبَدِّلُ He changes your sayyat into hasanat He changes your evil deeds into good deeds He's not just wiping them away when you make tawbah and when you do istighfar but He's replacing those evil deeds with good deeds because what Allah says, فَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمًا He is غَفُورُ He is a Rahim. My dear brothers and sisters, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith that I mentioned before, that Allah is that one who says, O son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and hope in me, I will forgive you despite what you do. And I do not care. Meaning I do not care how big your sins are. O son of Adam, even if your sins were to reach to the clouds of the sky, then you seek forgiveness from me, I will forgive you. Son of Adam, even if you were to come to me with nearly an earth full of sins, and then you meet me not having associated anything with me, then I will surely bring you as much as the good is forgiveness. Alhamdulillah. My dear brothers and sisters, it is important for us therefore to strive. Strive hard to do what we can. Inna alladheena amanu walladheena hajaru wa jahadu fi sabeel Allah ullaika yirjoon rahmatullah wallahu ghafoor rahim Allah says again Verily, those people, those persons who are, have Iman, وَالَّذِينَ hajaru, And they migrate. They migrate in terms of the time of the Prophet. They were doing the actual migration. In, time, in terms of us, we are migrating from wrong things towards good things. وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they strive into the path of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ those people, their hopes in the Rahmah of Allah, they have hope. Their hopes will be fulfilled in the Rahmah of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghafoor Rahim. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Hadith Qudsi that I am as my servants think of me. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani mentions that the meaning of I am as my servants expect of me means whatever he expects, I will do for him. So having that husnuzan, that good thought of Allah, that Allah is merciful. But we have to know the sifats of Allah. We have to be able to recognize that Allah is Latif. Most of the times when we think about Allah, we only think that inna batasha rabbika that verily the whole and the grasp of Allah is severe and that Allah is this punishing person, punishing entity I should say, that will have us, you know, and, and, and do it us based on our wrongs, He will be harsh to us. But Allah is, when we look at the names of Allah, you see so many names of Allah mentioned, other side, that Allah is Bafur, He is Rahim, he is a fool. He not only forgives, he wipes away. He is Rafiq, gentle, he is Latif, kind. All these qualities of Allah, we should have hope in. And when we make dua, 
make dua based on these qualities. Oh Allah, you are the full Rahim. You are the one who sustains me. Therefore, I seek your sustenance when I need. Oh Allah, I have sinned. You are full. You are the full. You are the one who forgives. You are the one who pardons. So forgive me, my dear brothers and sisters. Yaqub, alayhi salam, told his sons when they were going out, told them to go out and look for Yusuf and his brother after the incident where Binyamin was taken by Yusuf. He sent them out. Now remember that the sons are thinking that Yusuf is dead and that their father believes that the story they told them was truth. But he said, Ya Bunaya, Oh, my beloved sons, فَتَحَسَّسُوا مِنْ يُسُوفُ Go out and search for Yusuf and his brother. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْهِ And do not be despondent on the mercy and the hope of Allah. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيَأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْهِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ the only peace people who despair and are despondent on that mercy and hope in Allah are called al kafir are the people who are disbelievers. As believers, we never give up hope. We always have that hope that whatever we ask for, why would we raise our hands in dua if you do not have hope that what you are asking for will be fulfilled? If you raise your hand and you ask Allah, Oh Allah, grant me ease and such and such, and in your mind you are thinking, take Allah with me, that's it. Then you are not being an abd, a servant who has total reliance. Because one of the things of ubudiyya and being a servant and being a slave is that one has total reliance on the master. That is why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated that the best name that he was given and called was Abd. When Allah mentioned him in Surah Al-Isra, and he says to him that that's his servant, his slave traveled. That made him so happy because the person who is a slave has reached the utmost level of that level of servitude and gratitude and total reliance on one who is the creator. My dear brothers and sisters, as I said, the best thing that one can hope for is the pleasure of Allah and to see and to witness Allah in paradise. And that is the true essence of Iman. As mentioned at the end of Surah Al-Kaf, Surah that we are supposed to read every Friday, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا That one who يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ He has hope in the liqa, the meeting of his Rabb. Then فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Then let him do righteous deeds. Don't just have false hopes. You have to work for it. وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِهِ the ibadati rabbi ahada and do not associate anything with your Lord whatsoever. As the poet beautifully said, the most precious gift in my heart is hope in you. The sweetest words on my tongue are your praise and the most beloved moment to me is the moment in which I will meet you. Understand that hope my dear brothers and sisters, motivates us towards worship. When we have hope, then we will worship more frequently and we will start to enjoy that ibadah. As I mentioned before, hope helps us in that quality of obodhiyya and being the best of servants. And hope propels us to make dua. Mukhul ibadah. It is the marrow, it is the essence of ibadah. And when we have true hope in Allah, then we know that everything comes from Allah. As Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith, that even if the strap on your sandals were to burst, that you would make dua to Allah in that time. Utmost reliance. 
that Allah can do everything. My dear brothers and sisters, who makes our, our hearts become attached to Allah alone? Because in reliance and having that tawakkul, we understand that every single thing that we do comes from Allah. We are doing something and we are prevented because of something has happened. The rain is falling and we are planning to do something. We are happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that, that to happen. Probably if I was doing that work, something may have happened. We always have a good thought because Allah is al alim He knows everything. And therefore in being that person who has complete knowledge, he has knowledge that we don't have. And sometimes we may think that something has happened that is detrimental to us. But if we had total reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust in Him, we would understand that this happened for a reason and this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. So it is important for us to cultivate this hope by firstly reflecting on the benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as blessed at this. And to look at the rewards for which he has promised. Everything we do there is rewards, contemplate on that. Contemplate that when you come to the masjid in the night and you read Isha, you're getting half the night of Ibadah. That is a great reward. When you come to Jummah, your sins are forgiven, minor sins, until the next Jummah. When you read Surah Al-Kaf on today, you, you are light, you are beacon of light until next week. And all these different things that are mentioned in the hadith, think about them and contemplate that look, look how wonderful my Allah is. And when I sin, I just get one. But when I do good, I get ten. Allah is that person who is benevolent, merciful. And so my dear brothers and sisters, we need to reflect, as I said, on the mercies of Allah and do that by recognizing Him and learning His names and attributes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have full hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He guide us on the path of Surah al mustaqim forgive our sins and enter us into paradise. And may He all bless us with that ultimate pleasure of liqa and meeting Him on Yawm al-Qiyam. Wa akhir wa alhamdulillah wa